Hi, I'm Brent. Today we've got a really good opportunity to give you an update about how the engine control unit works in your turbo diesel Mitsubishi. We're talking about the Triton uh, 3.2, 2.5, 2.4. Very similar operating conditions, different ECUs. But what you can see here is the uh, software that we use to edit the factory ECU so we can control it as if Mitsubishi did it back in the factory. Now, some of our previous videos, um, we touched on different ways to control uh, the buildup of soot in the inlet manifold that we know is a big issue with emissions requirements different parts of the world and how the exhaust gas recirculation valve on the inlet controls the bypass of exhaust out of the exhaust manifold back in through the inlet mixing with um, combustion blow by oil in the inlet manifold forming that horrible vegemite black scum that we all want to hate now there's different ways to stop it um, starting at one end, you can put a catch can to stop the oil, but you still get EGR. You can put a blanking plate in there, which then causes some sometimes other um, fault codes. Um, one of the more common things these days, which in my previous video, um, and you want to reference it, is where you put a diode or resistor in the air inlet temperature sensor on the air mass meter at the uh, air filter, or you just buy an adapter loom off eBay and it tricks the ECU into running a different inlet temperature signal to what is real term and real world data. Now, what I wanted to do on those things, of course, pr you know, the prefer preferred way is properly tuning factory ECU so you get the best of everything, you know, the right max of boost match with fuel mixture, the EGR working when you want it to work and not when you don't want it to work. And what I'm gonna show you here is some of the things that you might not realize when you're doing these trickeries with the inlet air temperature sensor. Now that inlet air temperature sensor um, is effectively can be a likened to an on off switch. So when you put that resistor in the system, what we know is it has to tell the engine ECU that it's operating in an engine temperature based on air inlet measurement that is outside when normally parameters it would turn on the EGR valve. So of course you plug the signal in, it changes the signal coming out of the airflow meter sensor temperature, goes through the resistor, the resistor changes the voltage to the engine ECU and the ECU says well instead of inlet air temperature is 30 or 40 degrees, I'm actually minus 20 and well I think air inlet temperature is minus 20, I'm told by my Mitsubishi engineers never to turn on EGR. So this is the map and this is the software that we're talking about. Now I can't show you too much because it gets a little bit complicated but you can see here this is EGR and all of these different boxes here are different maps that I can turn on and if you look at that one right there it says EGR temp control and you see there's a checkbox and this map is turned on. So across the top of the scale you start at minus 20 you go to zero and you go right up to 80 at degrees centigrade and down here it goes minus 20 all the way up to 80. Now what that means in red, if you look closely, the red cells have an 8 in it which means the factory standard map says EGR is not to be turned on. The green cells of anywhere that is not 8 is scaled so effectively the EGR valve starts turning on and in the middle of the map here is the typical operating conditions of a balance between inlet air temperature and engine operating temperature when Mitsubishi decided the EGR should work. So effectively what your resistor, if you're looking at them, is trying to tell the engine ECU to fall into the red zones so it will not turn it on look at the temperature that your engine ECU thinks it's operating. It's either going to be minus 20 or 80 degrees in the vertical scale or minus 20 up to 80 degrees in the horizontal scale. So it's either going to think the engine is smoking hot or the inlet end te temperature is smoking hot or it's going to be freezing cold. And um, these signals then have a supplementary effect on anything else that the engine ECU requires the inlet temperature to affect. Now effectively this is the parameter that turns on and off. So if your engine operating conditions is normal in the middle all of these other supplementary things then start turning on and here is another engine speed versus value where in the middle here is where EGR scales in and scales out and then there's another one and you can see them these are all the different maps, and I won't go on and on and on, that we can adjust individually. And this is why when you get a custom ECU tune, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for your, your, your tuner, or the workshop that the tuner works for, to modify all those values, which there are, in some cases, hundreds of them. And in the case of EGR, there's 
probably 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 maps that we can adjust to get your engine to operate correctly. So the number one thing is a question to ask yourself, do you want to have your engine operating in a temperature that it doesn't know and it's false? Or do you want to have your engine operating in the correct temperature with all the right balance of information when it's correctly tuned? Now, I'm not saying that anything is good or bad or junk or positive, negative. There are different ways and at the end of the day, there's different values and different costs as well of what you need to tune and choose when you're modifying your car. And these are some of the good examples of what we do as far as our research and data. And because of the increase of propensity of different people looking for different ways to modify the cars, we do a little bit of research, hence our previous video, check it out where we talk about all the different ways you can modify and control EGR. And then we touch on this subject and now this video will explain it all together. So I really hope this video hasn't confused you, but it's given you a bit of an idea of what you can do if you've got the right software and if you've got the right tuner who knows how to use the software, because no matter how good this is, if the guy punching the numbers in doesn't know what he's doing, you're not going to end up with a good result. So of course, that's what we pride ourselves in. So number one thing, check what you're getting, make sure you understand what you're getting. And of course, make some more comments on this uh, channel. We'd love to hear from you from feedback, share it around, subscribe to us. And for in the meantime, no matter where you are in the world, my name is Brett Middleton. I really think, I hope it's helped you. Bye for now.